on February 1st, 2023, the astronomy community lost one of its most treasured members. Canadian Terence Dickinson was a renowned amateur astronomer, astrophotographer, and best-selling author. When he died, a comprehensive fifth edition of his classic book, Night Watch, was in the final stages of production. Headed by longtime friend and fellow astronomer, Ken Hewitt White. This video was originally filmed in 2012. We've updated the imagery to showcase the new edition and to preserve Terry's warm, thoughtful delivery for the next generation of amateur astronomers. People ask me, how do I get into it? You know, I think I'd like to learn about the sky, learn about the stars, learn about astronomy. What should I do first? Should I buy a telescope? That's usually the question. Of course, you start with buying a copy of Night Watch. You need a reference book. You need something that tells you where to look, when to look, and how to look. That's where the charts of Night Watch come in. You can be sure of what you're looking at. With the eye alone, every constellation, every star group, and the planets moving through them are all enumerated, named, and we tell something about the brighter ones. So it's your roadmap to the night sky. Step number two, after you've got the guidebook and identified a few things, is binoculars. You may already have them. So when you use them to look at the night sky, two things happen. One is the view is much better. The second thing is you're holding them up like this. And it doesn't take long before your arms get tired and you start jiggling even more. It's impossible not to jiggle. But there's a solution to that. It's called a binocular tripod adapter. And I just happen to have one here. And you can attach that to your binoculars. Having that improvement means that you see details like hundreds of craters on the moon. Most people have never looked at the moon with binoculars, ever. And when you do, you get this magnificent view of a truly alien world. And then you tripod mount them and just comes into razor sharp focus. So you're ready for a telescope now. This is called an altazimuth mount. Altitude, up, down, azimuth, left and right. Simple to use, and it's been very popular over the years. It also is the least expensive kind. What does a telescope show you that you can't see with binoculars or the eye? Well, a lot. More interesting to me and I think to most people, are the planets. The rings of Saturn are distinctly visible in the telescope, just hinted at in binoculars. I think it is the most beautiful sight of all the things that you can look at, is the rings of, of the planet Saturn. The most important of all of the star groups, at least for us in the Northern Hemisphere, is the Big Dipper. Seven stars in the classic Dipper formation. And you can use the seven stars in a magical way. They happen to point to seven beautiful bright stars or star groupings, all of which are important. It's your guide map. Once you learn the Big Dipper and how to use it to point to other stars and other constellations, you're set, really. It's about one dipper length from the pointer stars to Polaris, the North Star. The North Star is more accurately north than the compass will point you, significantly more accurately. So it's a useful thing to know. This is the type of guiding system that I use. Simple, straightforward, one group of stars is the only one you need to know. 
And while you're in there swimming around and looking at the stars and wondering what else to look at, you can get incredible surprises. I'm thinking of an aurora, northern lights. You're looking one night at the normal starscape and then you see on the northern horizon greenish bands and then spikes coming up. And then it rises higher and higher and fills the whole sky in a way that you've never seen before. And then multicolored, reds, greens, blues, and yellow. If you get a full-blown aurora display, you're never going to forget it. That's the beautiful thing about a telescope and the night sky, is that everything you see is real. It's not only real, it's usually immense and tremendously far away. It's an experience that you can enjoy self-discovery, the real universe. <laughs>